Hello there. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking His glory to the ends of the world. Today's devotional is captioned, He gave Himself. He gave Himself. And our team scripture is taken from Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. Paul the Apostle wrote to the Christians in Galatia, the churches of Galatia, and said, talking about the Lord Jesus, says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father? This is very important. It says that the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins, for this purpose, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God. So here he tells us that the world as we have it presently is an evil world. You see sometimes when you say that oh, there's nothing good to, try, to write home about about this world, there's a lot of suffering problems in this world. Yes, God, God is saying that this world is an evil world. So as we live in this world, understand that I'm living in an evil world. And that is why as a Christian should be very careful. You see, sometimes many Christians live anyhow. No, you should not live anyhow. You have to be spiritually secured because the world that you live in is an evil world. It's a world full of evil. And you are in, you are immersed in it. Right? So that is why the Bible says that the dark places, right, the dark places of this world, the dark habitations of this world, the psalmist says, is filled with the, ha- with, uh, with the habitation of cruelty. The dark places of this world is filled with the habitation of cruelty. There are dark places in this world. There are dark places in this world. It's filled with the habitation of cruelty. So we are in an evil world. But because the Lord Jesus Christ loved you and I, He gave Himself. He gave Himself. So Paul says, who gave Himself? The Lord Jesus gave Himself. The Lord Jesus said, when you read John's account of the Gospel, John chapter 10 verse 18, I like this statement from the great Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Anytime I look at this statement from the Lord, I am moved. I am moved. It's so hard touching. It's so hard touching. Let's observe what the Master said. He said, No man take it from me. No man take my life from me. No man take it from me. But I lay it down of myself, of my own accord. If you are listening to me, no, understand what Jesus did for you. He was not forced or pushed. It was not compulsory for him to do that. By choice. By choice. When he saw the sinner, that his fate, his destiny was eternal damnation. He was moved. So by choice of free will, he gave himself. So he says, no man take it away from me, but I lay it down of myself, of my own accord. So they have the authority, have the power to lay it down. And I have the authority, the power to take it again. He said, this commandment have I received from my father. So it was a commandment he received from the father. And because he loved the father, like one time he told them, the disciple, he says that I do this that the world may know that I love the Father. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He loved the Father. All his life was about pleasing the Father. All his life was about doing the right thing. We can learn a lot from the Lord Jesus. No wonder Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Copy me as I copy Christ. It's amazing. It's amazing. The greatest figure who ever lived was Jesus. No one ever lived like lived who is like Jesus. No ever no one no one ever spoke like Jesus. No one ever acted like Jesus. He he was different, unique. He's the great king of kings, the Lord of Lords. When you get to know Jesus, you will love Jesus. He is excellent, marvelous, majestic, full of splendor and glory yet so humble and lowly. We can learn so much from Jesus. That's why he told us. He says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Oh, the man Jesus. I tell people that no one killed Jesus. 
You see, when you we are children, we watched the Passion, right? And I remember those times when we were young. Sometimes we used to watch it to be sharing tears. I remember those 25 December and also sometimes the Easter, right? Mostly the Easter, that's why we watch the Passion. Then we sharing tears. All of you, when you, we all went through those experiences. Sometimes, even nowadays, when you watch it, we share, we will share tears. We share tears. It's so touching. And then you see that these Roman soldiers piercing Jesus. You see the stripes he received. It is so touching. But you see, all that we saw sometimes make us think that. These Romans really killed Jesus. No, the Romans didn't kill Jesus. The Roman, no one could kill Jesus. That is why he, he himself says, No man take care of it from me. How could you kill life? If life does not give up his life. How, that's why on the cross, when you read the Bible, Jesus commanded his death. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He himself commanded his death. Nothing could have killed Jesus. No matter how much they pierced him, he wouldn't have died. He wouldn't have died. He had to command his command his own death. He said, I command into your hands, I command my spirit. He commanded his own death. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. How could you kill life? How could you kill life? I, I, I'm, I'm the resurrection and the life. Another time he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How could you kill eternal life? You couldn't kill eternal life if eternal life does not give up. His life. You couldn't kill him. So I tell people that no one killed Jesus. No, he laid his life down. When you read the Bible, never think that the Romans killed Jesus. No, he allowed himself to be killed. He allowed rather himself to be killed. Jesus himself said, No man take it from me, but I lay it down of my own will. I lay it down of my own self. I lay it down of my own accord. That's what the master said. Think about it. How could you have killed life himself? How could you have killed life himself? Jesus gave himself. The greatest thing to do in life is to give oneself. Maybe you didn't know that. The greatest thing to do in life is to give oneself. But then for a good cause. If you give up yourself but for a bad cause, that one is not the greatest. But the greatest thing in life is to give your oneself, give up oneself for a good cause. That is the greatest thing in life. The greatest thing in life, my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, is to live for others. A life well lived is that life lived for the benefit of others. Understand that. At the life well lived is that she love people. Treat people nice, whether they are rich, whether they are poor. Treat them nice. It's important what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you. Whether someone is of a high societal class or low class, whether he's an aristocrat or not, whether he's erudite or not, whether he's an elite or not, respect the person. Love the person. Treat people with respect and dignity. Whether the person is a villager, whether the person is, is languishing under a bridge somewhere, value the person. Love human beings. Value human beings. Irrespective of their background, love them. Irrespective of their race, love them. Respect them. Because every human being is valuable. Respect every human being. It's very important. It's very important. You see, it's very important. Respect every human being. It's very important. Because when you read the Bible, always God. God reminds us of that. He said the same thing to, to Noah in his days. He said, anyone who kills man will also die by the sword. Why? Because he says that man was created in the image of God. So when the reason why you have to value every human being is to, is to see his value. His value is that he is the image of God. The greatest value of any human being is not the amount of money he has or the certificate he has or the degrees he has achieved in school. No. The value of every human being is the fact that he or she is the image of God. 
And because he or she is the image of God, that is why I value him. That's why I value her. That's how I respect him. That is why I respect her. It's very important. So he says, no man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Think about it. How could you have killed life himself? Jesus gave himself. And like we say, the greatest thing to do in life is to give oneself but for a good cause. So give up yourself, value human beings, and cherish giving up yourself for the good and benefit of others. Have you given yourself? If so, for what? You see, the first question you ask yourself, have you given yourself? If that is so, for what? Life is not about self-centeredness. Jesus received a commandment from the Father to give up himself. God can ask you to give up anything for his kingdom purpose. God can ask you to give up anything for his kingdom purpose. You have to understand that. Many Christians, you know, there are churches and Christians that the true gospel have not been presented to them. So they are looking for a Christianity of great comfort. A Christianity that they get to do all what they want to do and achieve while serving Jesus. That is not Christianity. That Christianity that has been presented to many is a lie. Read the Bible for yourself. Jesus said, If any man will follow me, let him take up his cross. If any man, he didn't, he didn't miss words. He says, If any, any man, whosoever, whosoever will follow me. That's what the master said. He said, Let him take up his cross. Let him de deny himself. Let him deny his own interest. That's what he was saying. That way, deny means deny your own interest. And now you are seeking the interest of Jesus. That's what he meant. That is what he meant. Let him deny himself. You see. So that, Christ, read about what Paul the Apostle said concerning himself to the efficient elders. You see, he said, I have served the Lord in tears, in tears and much trembling. That's what Paul the Apostle said. So I've served the Lord in tears. That's what Paul said. That's the same Paul who said, anyone who will live godly will suffer persecution. So I've, I've served the Lord in tears. It was not an easy journey. This apostolic journey was not an easy journey. No, it's not an easy journey. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. If we suffer, in Philippians, Paul says you have been called to suffer for Christ. Not only to believe in him, but to suffer for him. So Christianity is a call to suffer for Jesus. Understand that. So when you say, who, who are you, a Christian? See yourself, I'm the one called to suffer for Jesus. See, if the church will understand this, the Christians will understand this, they will not be preaching uh, first flight, second flight, um, pre-tribulation rapture. They say that they'll be raptured before the tribulation. They don't get it. They still don't get it. Christianity is a call to suffer for Jesus. And Jesus himself said, if any man will follow me, if any, he should what? Deny himself and take up his cross. That's what Jesus said. So Jesus will not say that some Christians are to enjoy and some Christians, because nowadays also they come with a certain doctrine that they say, that, oh, the early, the early apostles, they will have to suffer for the present church so that we will enjoy, like for instance, Paul said to the Corinthians, Death work in us and life work, work in you. They didn't get what Paul was trying to say. When Paul said that death work in us and life work in you, it doesn't mean that they have to suffer and you have to, you will not go, go to any problem. No, 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 no. You have to understand the context, what he was trying to communicate to these people. You have to understand why he has to even write that letter to them. So that's what the man was saying. That's why they take Paul many times out of context. That's the problem. Jesus said, any Christian, every Christian, if you follow him, you have to take up your cross. That is why Jesus said, anyone who will follow him, any disciple will have to take up his cross. So it doesn't apply to some Christians and others are free. And others will go with first flight and others will remain because they, are, they didn't, they are not good Christians, so they remain to go to the tribulation. No, that's not what Jesus said. Paul said that we have been called to suffer for Christ. 
Christianity is a call to suffer for Christ. So if you are going through anything because of Jesus, you have to understand why you are going through that. Right? You have to understand why, why you are going through that. Jesus received a commandment. Jesus received a commandment from the Father to give up himself. So God can ask you to give up anything for his kingdom purpose. The Christianity of only receiving and not giving up anything is not true Christianity. In true Christianity, there is something you will sacrifice for God. And it will be something costly and valuable. You have to understand that. If you are living the true Christian life, there will be something you will sacrifice for God. If you have not, if you know that you have not sacrificed anything for God, which was costly and valuable, it means you are not living. You, you see, we are not all going to suffer the same thing for God. Depending on what God has called you, you will suffer more. You give up more, right? You give up more things. But then at any Christian at your level, you will suffer something costly and valuable because of your love for Jesus. So if as a Christian you have not suffered, you know you know you have not suffered anything which is costly and valuable for, 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 for Jesus, it means that probably you are not living the true Christianity life. There's something wrong with your Christianity. You have not been making the right choices. Because in true Christianity, there is something you will sacrifice for God and it will be something costly and valuable. You will not fulfill your true purpose in life if you always seek after that which gives you comfort. As long as you are always after that which gives you comfort, you have to, you, you want to uh, 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 skip the hard road and you have to, that which only gives you comfort and pleasure, you will not fulfill your true purpose. You will not fulfill your true purpose. Anyone who is on a course for faith is true purpose, who face hardness, who face hardness, who face hardness. That's why the Bible says, suggest to go if you endure hardness. So you will not fulfill your true purpose in life if you always seek after that which gives you comfort. You have to understand that you are and will be measured by how much you give up for God. That is true. You will be measured by how much you give up for God. How much you sacrifice for Jesus. That is how. And how much you live for him. That is how you be measured at the end of it all. Loving God is giving up something for him. Loving God is giving up something for him. You cannot say you love God when you don't give up anything for him. You cannot say you love God when you don't give up anything for him. Jesus gave himself but what have you given? Jesus, the Lord Jesus, gave himself. But what have you given? The reason why the Father loved Jesus so much was because he laid down himself. So Jesus said, Therefore do my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Therefore do my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Therefore do my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. John chapter 10, verse 17. So beloved, the Lord is our example. Paul says you should copy Christ. Jesus gave up himself, so give up yourself. God bless you.